We're going to talk about developing basically follow-up, okay? And here is what we have done so far. We now have an ad, right? We have a, at least a sketch, a blueprint of an ad that is going to drive people to your lead magnet landing page, and they're going to download your lead magnet. We've done all of that. So we have now gotten these lead magnets into the hands of your PNCs. This is huge. This is huge because here's what you got to understand. Every, literally every time somebody downloads that thing, they're basically raising their hand and saying, I have this problem. Like we have now gotten them to take a big step forward out of the crowd. Some could call it even magnetic, but I'm not going to call it magnetic. Um, <laughs> a big step out of the crowd towards an object that's attractive for some reason. They have now raised their hand and signified, I am interested, I have this problem, okay? This is freaking huge. And like I talked about at the beginning, um, so many of these digital ad campaigns fail because marketers just try to go straight for the jugular. And, and so they run ads that just say, call and schedule a consultation. And it's too, you're asking for too much too fast. You're, you're asking them to marry you when you haven't even met yet, instead of taking them on a few dates first. And so the lead magnet, I just want to underscore, like this is a really big effing deal. Mo many of you did not have a lead magnet on your website, did not even have a lead magnet like in your mind when you came here. And almost everybody, if not everybody, now has not only a lead magnet, but also the sketch of a landing page for the lead magnet and an idea of how you're going to use ads to drive traffic to your landing page. So like, this is really good. You guys have done some awesome work. You are way, way, way ahead of most lawyers who don't think about this stuff and never create a landing page, okay? So give yourselves a round of applause because you've earned it. So now what? They downloaded the lead magnet. And um, I had a few conversations with people who were like, yes, I have put a lead magnet in place, but, the, but I don't have any follow-up. And the follow-up is like the missing ingredient, right? If you don't have follow-up systems in place, you are missing out on the value of the lead magnet. Because like I've said before, your PNCs are generally lazy and complacent. So you got them to take that first step to download the lead magnet, which is huge but you still need to keep knocking on their door to encourage them to now take the next step. And what's cool is you're not doing this from like a place of pushy salesperson. You're just basically saying, like, hey, you mentioned that you're concerned about this thing. Like, are you okay? Can I help you? Like, that's all you're doing. You, because they have now downloaded your lead magnet, you can now come to them and say, hey, I saw that you downloaded this. Can I help you solve the problem? Like, there's nothing pushy, there's nothing obnoxious about it. You're just following up with them to see how you can help. So, they downloaded the lead magnet. What comes next is a wow package, which is optional, and a follow-up sequence. Just because of where we are time-wise, and because it's really kind of optional, it's a little bit more of an advanced level strategy, I'm gonna just give you the super high level overview of a wow package and tomorrow or like I mentioned there's going to be some follow-up digital sessions we'll either do a lesson on the wow package tomorrow or over over zoom in a couple of weeks because you do not need this wow package in place in order to launch this funnel okay that said I'm going to give you an idea of what it is right so the follow-up system has two elements it has the wow package which is basically a high, it's a bundle of high value content put together. So it's, you know, it could be a PDF, it could be a couple PDFs, it could include, it could be a, a, a consumer report, it could be video lessons, it could be printed special reports. The point of the wow package is when somebody gets it, you want them to say, wow. You want your PNC to say, wow, this guy is so generous, I can't believe he gave me all this information. I can't believe she gave me all this information. Like, this is super helpful. If any of you have a book, have any of you written a book? Do any of you have a book? One, two, we've got a few books. So including your book in a wow package 
is really good. Um, if you want to make it digital, just give them the digital version of your book, right? It's a generous, you're giving them an abundance of information, abundance of help. You also want them to say, wow, I didn't realize this problem was so serious, right? You want to take the opportunity to kind of reiterate the stakes, right? What happens if they don't solve their problem? What is the, the worst case scenario? You want to bring that to their attention so that they're not complacent about it. It can include a bunch of different things. It could include a free self-assessment. It could include some case studies. It could include your book. It could include a firm t-shirt. Like, you, you, can, you can really get creative here. Um, you, how much you want to spend on it and the decision of whether you want to make this a physical thing that you actually mail is really dependent on how much your clients are worth to you and, and what your margins are on those clients. You can't afford to you know, create this nice physical package for a, a client if your margins are pretty low. So we're, we'll come back. I'm, Eric, let's just come back and have the wow conversation tomorrow. Um, just, just to give you an example. So this was my old business. We created a wow package. When somebody requested our email newsletter, we also then said, hey, if you give us your mailing address, we will send you this whole like bundle of content here, which was like this box, which was pretty cool. Um, and inside it was a couple of newsletters, some infographics, just some, just some stuff, right? To show them that we really know what we're doing. Um, another, here's another example. I can't even remember what these guys do. Power control services. Man, I have so much going through my mind today. Um, this was something related to maintenance on power plants. And so this was a, was a shock, it was a wow package, like this hard case they send to their PNCs. Okay, just giving you some ideas. This one I thought was kind of cool. Again, this is physical. We're, you, we're not gonna, I don't want you guys to, to try to create that today, but this is like a roof. I think it's a, a roofer. And so it's, uh, it's just a package, the roof whisperer, it's got some information. The point is it shows up and it makes an impression. Right? It makes them say, wow, this law firm really gets it. Wow, they're really generous. Wow, this is a real problem and I better take action on it. So we're not going to do the wow package exercise now, but that's big picture the point of a wow package. So what we are going to talk about is the, the most basic critical component of this, which is just that you do need to have multi-step follow-up. So, what we're going to do is on page 68, we're going to actually diagram out what that looks like. The goal, the purpose of this sequence, the reason we do this, it's a few different things. The point the, the overarching purpose is we want them now to schedule a consultation. So these people have downloaded your lead magnet. They have signified they have this problem. Now we need to get them to schedule a consultation. I don't want you to get confused about, you know, other possible reasons and, and motivations for running a follow-up sequence. The sole and express purpose is to get them to schedule a consultation. Baby steps. They downloaded the lead magnet. Now let's get them to schedule the consultation. You can do this, so email is, is obvious and a no-brainer, and that's what we're gonna plan out right now is a couple of emails to get them to schedule your consultation. There are other things you can do. You can send them a postcard in the mail. You could, send them a, you could give them a phone call. There are other things, there are other things you, you can do, um, but the, the basic, the most important thing to get in place is just a couple of emails. So, and I, this is really easy. I don't want you guys to overthink this. Um, it's just a couple of emails that say, well, let me do, let me do this. So page 64. So what we're gonna do is on the top of page 64, you're gonna write the title of the lead magnet, okay? So, Lead magnet number one, write the title of it. And just go ahead and do that right now. 
Number two is what's the call to action? For pretty much all of you, the call to action is going to be schedule a consultation. Is there anybody that would even consider a different call to action than schedule a consultation after they've downloaded your lead magnet? Zoom. Say again? Zoom a Zoom meeting. So whether your consultation is on Zoom or in person, like in my mind, that's just scheduling a consultation. Okay, so call us now rather than scheduling a consultation. That's a really good point. Um, I would be okay with giving them those two options, right? We're normally, I normally don't like giving people options, but basically schedule a consultation or give us a call right now or vice versa. Call us now or schedule a consultation at a convenient time. So that's your call to action. Media channels, I just want you guys all to start with email, okay? So on call to action, we... Can you use the mic? Let me try to go right over your head. Um, okay, so we are contingent fee. We don't charge for it. So okay. we, how, I mean, I get mixed messages from people on whether, you know, to use the word free at all. And then do we use a free consultation or free case evaluation or call? Do you have any thoughts um, on that? I, there's a lot more we'd have to dig into to answer the question of whether you should advertise that it's free or not. Um, let's have that conversation one on one. OK. Um, OK. So, so you've written down the lead magnet. You've written down your, your call to action. For media channels, I just want you to start with email. Like, let's just get an email sequence diagrammed out first. And then all we're gonna do is, you've got five windows here. Each one of these just represents the email. It's just one email. Each box is one email. Let me pull up, I think I have an example here. Yeah. Um, so you're going to write the title of the lead magnet, the call to action is schedule a free consultation. The media channel you're going to use is email. And then we're just going to diagram out each of the three, three, four, or five emails. So the first box says timing. That just means when does that email go out? So the first one is going to be immediate. That means that right as soon as they download the lead magnet, you're sending out this first email. Then the next email, the timing is 48 hours later. And the third email is 48 hours later. Um, that's usually a good sort of gap, about two days between each email. Um, this is something you test and you modify, and you know, some of you might end up in a different place than others. But generally speaking, like some lawyers and some, lots of business owners, honestly, try to follow up like once a week or like even longer, and it's just too long. Like people, they've, they've, they've downloaded a lead magnet, they've basically raised their hand and said, I have an urgent problem right now, and so we gotta like get on top of it, right? Before they, before they change their mind or before it becomes not important to them. So every two days or so is, is, is a good place to start. And so it's just really stupid simple what these emails should be. Like nothing more than like a couple of sentences, maybe like two paragraphs at the most. So the first one, should just be, hey, thanks for downloading our report. And then something like, if you're considering divorce and want our help, click here to schedule a consultation. That's it, super simple. Two days later, hey, I'm just following up to be sure you got the report. Do you have any questions? Click here to schedule a consultation. The third one, so this is, I'm getting a little creative, but you don't have to get creative. If you guys have some video assets like already created, or if you have some blog entries already created, like this is a good place to share those. So like this third one is, hey, I wanted to share a video with three tips to protect your kid's emotional health during divorce. And you give them the link to the video. Any questions, click here to schedule a consultation. So if you guys have video content, if you have blog content, you can work that stuff into these follow-up emails. Number four could be another two days later. Hey, just checking in. Um, again, want to be sure that you got all your questions answered. 
do you still have this problem? Click here to schedule a consultation if you want to talk about it. You guys get the drift? All right, so let's just go ahead and, and sketch these out. Just a couple sentences, simple, quick, don't make this hard. What would you say to those of us who are looking at this going, I am totally going to be spamming these people every 48 hours, I mean, 40, yeah, and what, what's the science behind why we should be doing it that frequently and having these many? Yeah, um, the long answer to that is we got to start somewhere. The long answer to that is we got to start somewhere and we will, once we get into the KPIs, the KPI, one of the big KPIs on this is are people unsubscribing? Or are people like reporting it as spam? And if, if we're getting a significant percentage of that, then we might say, okay, we're, we're bothering people. But conceptually, I want you to understand you're really not, you're not spamming them. Like they have identified that I have a, they have a problem. They told you that they have a problem. I would argue that you're doing them a disservice if you don't follow up with them and continue to kind of knock on their door and say, hey, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Like, are you okay? And um, maybe by then attaching value each time, yep. then whether they wanted to hear from you or not, they at least yep. are getting something for their time. And that's where like including a video or including a blog entry or including a book, if you can do something in each email to add a piece of value to it, that makes it even better. And then um, one other question is, when do we stop? Because let's say I'm asking them to sign up to watch a webinar I'm going to do like in a month. Should I not be sending these out or advertising it right away? Should I be giving them So if you're doing like a webinar, every, yes. it's, that's almost like a kind of different conversation because you'll set that up using your webinar software and it will automatically send out some reminders as the webinar gets closer. Um, so don't even really think about that piece of it right now. Okay. So then about how many would you say is, is a good starting point? Good rule us? of thumb is, is three to five. Okay, thanks. And, um, and this is, this is a classic example of you, you start with, you know, prototype version 1.0, and then we look and we watch and we see, you know, how is it working? Are people responding? Are Did people... anyone sign up? Yeah. And then, and then you, and so then you make a change. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Danny, quick question. So, um, if someone's to click through where it says, click here to schedule a consult mm -hmm. in our office, they'd speak to our director of client relations first, who's not an attorney. Also not a salesperson, but just in the sense that they're not closing the client, but her job is to set up a paid consultation with the lawyer. So as far as just the wording we're using and calling it a, a, a consult, um, do you believe that that implies to the person who's clicking through that they're actually going to be speaking to a lawyer with their, with their first contact with the firm? And if so, do you think that language should be adjusted to meet whatever their expectations might be. I'm curious if the CEO team in the back has any input on that question. So, can I get the mic? It is right. I'm not going to catch it. OK. I think there's an easy solution for that partially is to say, you know, schedule a consult with our team now, right? And you're not misleading them to say that they're definitely going to speak with an attorney or not. And if everything else about your business, your site, your marketing, you know, references your team and isn't all about you, then I think that you're going to be okay. I do, I, I don't necessarily want to subscribe to the opinion that Every time people here schedule a consult, it implies that they're meeting with, with, an, with an attorney. Um, and you're not saying schedule a consult to speak with the attorney, right? You're just saying schedule a consult. But you can easily solve that by saying schedule, you know, schedule an appointment with our team, schedule you know, a consult with our team, and you can easily you know, not be concerned about it being misleading. Does anyone? Tracy? Another option is you can name the session. So instead of calling it a consultation, if you have a, if you have distinctions between what's a consultation versus a discovery session or something like that, a strategy session, you can name it the thing that goes to the team versus the thing that goes to the lawyer. 
yeah, essentially identify the kind of appointment that they're actually calling about, and that way it doesn't necessarily give the other implication. Okay. I'll add to this. So I'm jumping the gun here, Danny, a little bit, but when we talk about like the pre-glide sequence that's coming up, I believe, is that right? Yes. Is that, okay. But nope. Don't get people too far ahead of themselves. Okay. But when you're looking at the, into the pre-glide sequence, you can further up this team idea there as well. So it's not just that one part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so 48 hours is, 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 it, it tends to work really well, but you can adjust that. Like for example, if you know that your sales cycle is just longer, like if you know that, that people are going to, um, they're gonna take a couple of weeks, like it's just going to be a longer sales cycle and you feel like you wanna make the, the emails four days apart, five days apart, like that's fine. Start somewhere and then we'll test it and measure it and, and adjust it from there. But like don't feel like you have to go with 48 hours, okay? Just choose something that you think makes sense. And the most important thing is that we just get this stuff out there and then we analyze how it's working once it's out there. So just get it launched, okay? If you've got three lead magnets, you need to have three of these follow-up sequences. They might be super similar. It's, it's great if they're super similar, just it needs to be adjusted to reflect the different lead magnet. Concept is basically the same, yeah? Who is done with, is anybody done with all three? Is anybody done with one? Okay, a lot of you are done with one. Um, two and three should be pretty easy, so it's just kind of power through it. If, this, if your lead magnet is a webinar or a live event, these emails, this follow-up sequence, this is not just the reminder emails to go to the webinar. This, this sequence should really happen after the webinar. So this is the assumption they've already consumed the lead magnet. So they watched the webinar, they went to the event, and now you're following up and you're saying, hey, thanks so much for coming to our event. Do you have any questions? Can we help schedule a consultation? So this is after the lead magnet has been consumed. A number of people have asked, who should these emails come from? Should it come from the firm or should it come from me? I would say, and this is, this is my take on it, have it come from you. Like it comes from, it comes from Jerry or it comes from Eric. Like you're the one that signs it at the bottom that makes it feel more personal. But you have to be super careful not to say schedule a consultation with me. Schedule a consultation. It should be schedule a consult with my team. You need to talk about your team, our team. Don't give them the impression they're going to get to work directly with you. But it is good to give it the personal touch of signing the email at the bottom. That was the first thing. And I totally forgot the second thing. <laughs> the second thing was, what, what about after the fifth email? Like, should you say on the fifth email that I'm not going to bother you anymore? The answer is no, you shouldn't. Because eventually, we're not, we're not there quite yet, but we're going to talk about, I want all of you to have a monthly newsletter in place. You're going to have a monthly email newsletter that's going to go out. And these people are going to get your newsletters. They're, you're not going to drop off the face of the earth. So I would just position the fifth email. Like you don't, don't make it anything special. Just make it one more email where I'm bringing you some value. Here's a video to watch. Here's a blog to read. Um, don't say anything about this is the last time I'm going to contact you. We're doing good, guys. We are, we are in the home stretch. We got a few more minutes. We're going we're gonna to diagram out one more thing. And then you're going to get to see some video and hear from somebody that's not me for a little while. So nine, develop your glide path. So what we've done so far, we did all this basically today. We created a blueprint for the ad, drives traffic to the landing page where they download your lead magnet. And once they've done that, they get this follow-up sequence of emails that we just blueprinted out. And it's driving them to do what? Schedule an appointment. Schedule a consult. Once they've done that, 99% of businesses and lawyers out there consider the job done. Hey, great. They schedule an appointment. Doesn't matter until they actually show up for their consultation. And so we create one final link in the chain here, which is a series of emails. Eventually, it could evolve into a postcard or something too, but for now, emails designed to get them to show up for the consultation. 
The, um, anyone know what page I'm on? Page 72. So the purpose of your sequence is to keep them enthusiastic about the consult so that they show up. Uh-huh. Okay, if you, if you offer a paid consultation and they've already paid, I don't think you need to spend, do you have an issue with show rate? No. Okay, if you have no issue with show rate, I would still send them a couple reminder emails, just like automatic, hey, here's, my, here's the address, like let me know if you have any questions. But let, yes, this becomes less important if they've already paid for the consult and you have 100% show rate. Anyone on the CEO team want to add to that? Um, yes. Thanks. Just also keep in mind that while they paid for a consult and they're showing you more of their engagement and put some more skin in the game to talk to you, you still want to precondition them to actually Bingo. buy from you. So this glide path sequence is going to help you do more preconditioning to actually get them to think of you as their lawyer before they walk in the door so that when it's time to close your sale, you can close your sale. So don't neglect this part merely because you have paid consults and you don't have a show up issue, okay? Really good, really good, thank you. You're welcome. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. So the purpose of your pre-consult sequence is keep them enthusiastic so they show up, two, deliver them, to, to Stephanie's point, deliver them in the right frame of mind for their consultation, three, address and overcome objectives prior to the consultation, like what are some of the common objectives uh, objections, that should say objections, address and overcome objections prior to the consultation. So what, this is a chance to talk to your sales team and what are the, what are the objections that they hear during consultations and how can you bring those up in your glide path and address them proactively, right? So that your, your, your PNC has already thought about it and you've already helped them get over that. Big, big um, piece of the pie here is include social proof. So like this is a great place. Um, if you have testimonials, this is a great place to share some testimonials. This is, this is a good place. This is okay where it, where it is okay to, to talk about the fact that you've been doing this for a long time. Like this is what you do. You're passionate about it. And then um, communicate logistical details, right? This is obvious, but just don't give them an excuse to not be able to get to your office, right? Give them, a, give them a, a link to find your office on Google Maps. Let them know if they're gonna have trouble parking, if they're gonna have trouble finding the office. Remember, these people subconsciously, your PNCs are often looking for excuses not to show up, right? And so if they can't find your office, that might be all it takes. So you gotta remove any possible objection or barrier um, that would keep them from showing up. Let me do this last one and then let's chat. And most, not most importantly, but critically importantly, we talked about this a minute ago, they need to be expecting to work with your team, not you. I know a lot of you aren't gonna be the one doing the consultation, may not even be, you know, may not even have a conversation with them. So it's really important that you make this about your team and your team can't wait to serve them and your team is here to help, not yourself. And so what we're going to do is flip to page 74, and we're going to start this out with, I want you to do three or four of these messages. It's, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, starting with three or four, it's, you, it's kind of arbitrary. Um, three is the number that I typically start with. We might end up adding more. We might end up removing. But what's important is just that you get something out there. And so start with three. If it feels right to start with four, that's fine. Um, here's what I would do from a timing standpoint. I would make your first touch point immediate. So as soon as they schedule the consultation, the first one goes out. And it says, thanks so much for scheduling a consultation. 
we're excited to meet with you. You know, we're confirmed for this date. It should be just an instant, really just kind of a confirmation. And the last touch point should probably be like the day before, right? Or even the morning of, where it's just a, um, you know, just can remember we're on for tomorrow. I can't wait to see you. Here's some additional content. So from a timing standpoint, the first one can be immediate. The last one should be right before the consult. Um, and then you could just, this is where like some of the automation that you, that you build out will do some of this automatically. So maybe don't even worry about what to write for the timing for the second and third one. Let that be something that your vendor or your tech platform figures out when you build this out. So the first one is the message they get immediately after scheduling. The last one is the message they get the day before the consultation. Second and third one, just don't worry about the timing for now. All right, let's diagram these out. So go ahead and take a shot at it. Let's get at least one done. What you're going to find is that the second and the third one are just very similar to the first one. Um, so let's get one done. And if you have time to do two and three, fantastic. But let's jump in. Let's get number one done. Raise your hand if you have questions. We'll be circulating.